Hey, this is Luke with Salt Strong. In this video, we're gonna be covering where to fish during slack periods. We're all gonna be facing these periods. This is the, the time where the water flow is just barely moving. It could be the case when it's just going from, you know, from a low to a high where just that transition zone, in many cases, is a very short window. As you can see here, this is a, a, normal, a normal tide chart, and so it's just during the peaks. There's gonna be a slack period where that water is not moving. However, there are some situations, particularly for those of us on the Gulf, who, uh, who can have some really long periods of very little tidal flow, very little current flow, and that, that's something that we need to plan for. Um, just know, first of all, that you don't have to dodge these time periods. Uh, I used to just, if I saw this, I wouldn't even go fishing. I was out, the fish aren't gonna be biting. There are still gonna be some feeding fish during those time frames. We just have to put ourselves in the right spots and, and plan accordingly. Like this day in particular, I actually, actually caught some really good fish. I caught a slam in this short window. That was the only time I could fish that day. I went ahead and went out there and, uh, and had a great time. So just wanted to highlight the things to look for during the slack period. So a question came in, I thought it was an excellent question. And so I thought it'd be fun to make a, make a video response to it. So first tip is just to find some, some sort of moving water, find the maximum current flow. If there's just a little bit of action, that's gonna help. And so for instance, if there's no current flow at all, right? let's say that we're back on, on, this, uh, on this day in particular, if there's no, no current flow at all, what, what you want to find is at least a choke point where there's some, at least some wind, some, some wind-based current, right? So the, these tidal graphs, it only projects what is going to happen based on the gravitational for, forces of the moon and the earth. And so if you just factor in the wind, right, the wind can still be pushing water. If you have recent rain, rainfall, that can still be pushing water out into the bays. And so just look for any sort of constriction points where where there's like wind blowing uh, through uh, two little islands, that's gonna be a constriction zone where that water is gonna push through. And it, although it won't, it won't be strong, it's gonna be at least better than nothing. And, uh, and even just the, the churning of the water from fishing the windy sides. Like if you're in a, if you're in a bay, on a circular bay, um, fish the windy sides during slack period because again, at least, that, at least that wind, that wave activity is churning up the water and that's just gonna increase the odds. That would, be, that would generally be better than fishing the slack side, the wind protecting side, where there's now you have no wind, so the water's gonna be glass calm, there's no tidal, there's no current flow, and that's gonna be a, a really tricky situation to catch fish. Again, in most situations, this is, there's never a, a one size fits all, this is just, a, just some tips to put yourself in the right spot at the right time. So in fishing this, this sort of situation, um, put, put a big focus on the wind and just think about what that wind is doing. If, is it pushing bait fish up against the shoreline? Or again, as I said before, if there's two islands, is it pushing water through the cut between those two islands? In most cases, that'll be a yes, and that's going to be a very good type of spot to fish. And so if you're fishing an area with the more normalized tides, uh, another tip to do, especially if, if you're on a boat, is to target the passes and inlets during the slack periods, because in many cases, those passes and inlets during the peak current zone, you know, during the, the biggest slope of the line, that in many cases, those inlets and passes are actually really tough to fish. The water's just cranking through there. It's, it's just too fast, it's just it's not manageable. And in many cases, right before and after the slack periods is actually gonna be the best bite. So what I like to do in a situation like this is I'll be up on the flats, you know, at least relatively close to a pass or an inlet. I'll be up on the flats, you know, targeting and, and taking advantage of the feeding fish during the, the max current flow. And then I'll shift out, once that current flow starts dying off, I'll then shift out to the pass or the inlet. I'm actually going into the tide, so I'm gonna shorten the slack period. I'm gonna fish the, the slack period in that pass or inlet. That's gonna be the, the time where it's easiest to fish. And in many cases, the fish are biting really good. And then once it starts moving again, once it starts cranking where it's too strong to fish, then I'll move back out to the flat or, or that nearby shoreline where, where that increased current flow is, uh, is, is manageable and, and is triggering those fish on. So, so that'll be the two tips. Just want to give this, this quick lesson on during the slack period, head, just head toward the funnel points. A again, in this case, whether it's a pass or an inlet, that's great. If you're in a boat, that's doable. Obviously, if you're in a kayak, you can't go travel five, 10 miles in a short period of time. And so if you're in a kayak or, or paddleboard, then just kind of go back to this game plan where really just focusing on the wind. You know, what, where is that wind at least churning the water and moving the water to help just put the odds in your favor of finding success? So the, I would say the one thing to, to make sure to not fish or at least to minimize your time in fishing during slack period is those wind protected shorelines where there's just no water movement. It's dead still, flat calm. Those fish are gonna be very spooky. They're not gonna be very aggressive. And, uh, and so your, your time would be best used in most cases 
um, in that windy zone, or at least that wind-blown zone, or in those funnel points, as I mentioned. So that's it for now. Just want to leave this quick tip. If you have any other suggestions on how to fish the slack periods, whether it's a normal slack, where it's just going to be like 30 minutes or so to an hour, or the long, slow slack period type days where where the, for, for a long period of time that water's not moving. I'd love to hear your tips. If you have any feedback questions, leave the comment section down below. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club in America because we actually guarantee you'll be catching more fish while saving time and money. We do this through our premium education, our exclusive insider community, and huge discounts on all the tackle you need. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.